What's going on guys? Welcome to Victims and Villains. If you guys are new to this channel, we create men content specifically addressing mental health through pop culture and introduce you to a couple cool flicks along the way. My name is Captain Nostalgia and today we're talking about paint. Now the trailer for this movie alone has brought more traffic to this channel than this channel has ever seen. It's like two years in existence. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Payton tells the story of Carl Nargle, who is a pseudo Bob Ross. We'll get into that in just a few minutes. He is the number one show on PBS in the Vermont area. And he does a painting show, as the movie would suggest, and has everything going for him until a younger painter kind of challenges his empire. First off, let me just say that before I get into talking about this movie, before we address any of the performances, the pacing, anything about this, if you have seen the Netflix Bob Ross movie, you have seen this movie. The majority of this movie is dramatized portions of what the Netflix documentary was all about. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, the Netflix released a documentary a couple years ago called Bob Ross, Happy Accidents, Betrayal, and Greed. It's a great movie. I highly recommend it. And I think it would be an excellent companion piece to paint. On top of that, paint feels like a little bit more mainstream, not quite so dark comedy as Death to Smoochie. So it's like Happy Accidents, Betrayal, and Greed had a child with Death to Smoochie, and Pain is the result. And this movie is just okay. It's neither good nor bad. I think it just kind of falls literally right in the middle. Sadly, when it comes to its memorability, I'm probably going to remember the documentary over this film just because I felt like the documentary had more fluff. But also I think that the comedy just feels kind of really basic. There's not a whole lot of depth. And stories like this I feel like we've seen hundreds of times. This is an archetype of a guy that is on top. A younger challenger has emerged and essentially threatens that entire empire, forcing said main character to go on this inward journey of humility. And don't get me wrong, this film definitely has its moments and is definitely worth checking out. I think Owen Wilson as Nargle in this movie gives probably one of the best performances of his career. I thought I was just enamored with his performance. Wilson portrays a lot of charisma and has a lot of that at the beginning when Nargle is at the height. But then also there's this like vulnerability and almost transparency aspect to his performance that I feel like, again, makes it really one of his best performances that we've seen in recent memory from Wilson. I like how the film kind of sets itself up where it kind of does feel like a Bob Ross type biopic but then you kind of get these like little nuggets and these little tweaks that make Carl Nargle really his own character and that's where I feel like the film really shines. A lot of people that have commented and have watched the trailer for this movie on this channel have always kind of talked about how this movie just feels like a Bob Ross ripoff and honestly they kind of wrote themselves in the corner when they made Owen Wilson support Ross's signature look and also be on PBS. I don't know if that was intentional. I don't know if that's like an element of like satire, but it really kind of takes away from this movie in terms of like if you're going to make a Bob Ross movie, just make a Bob Ross movie because otherwise you're kind of just left with a, a so-so counterpart that's going to drive more people to the Netflix documentary than it is going to be to your actual film. But hey, sometimes happy little accidents happen in Hollywood where two movies with the same exact plot get made. It is what it is. But I think in the case of paint, there's not in, there's not really enough to uh, really draw people to this film. Like I think the supporting cast in this movie is fine. Steven Root, Michaela Watkins, Wendy, McLeodon, Covey. Among others, do a good job at conveying the characters that they are assigned to 
to play. But outside of that, like, there's nothing really that, like, stands out about this movie. And again, this movie is not necessarily a bad movie. It's not necessarily a great movie. It's literally just kind of feels very middle of the line. I feel like the pacing of this movie works really well for the story it's trying to tell. It never feels like the story ever drags. It never feels like it's rushing too much. It kind of has the perfect pace. And I will say I really did like the way that this movie kind of ends and, and kind of how everything is... Uh, the, the resolution, I think, is, is conveyed really well. I don't talk about endings and resolutions a lot on this channel, but I think this one had a really, really dynamic uh, ending to it and kind of capitalized on all of the, not only the sub-stories, but the backstories for some of the characters. It just, it worked out really well at the end. So let's run this through the Rorschach rating scale. Overall, I'm going to give Paint a 3 out of 5. I think this movie is fine for what it, the story it's trying to convey. Again, I feel like the Netflix documentary does it better. And if you guys are looking for something a little bit more riskier, I would, I would also suggest Death of Smoochie. I walked out of this movie feeling like I wanted to watch both again. And if you need a reason to watch a Robin Williams film, <laughs> make that one of them because Death of Smoochie is one of his most uh, underappreciated films in my opinion. But outside of that, I think this movie does fine for the story that it's trying to tell. Obviously, there's a layer of satire, but ultimately I feel like that layer of satire kind of took away from the overall performance of the movie as a whole. Owen Wilson gives probably one of the best performances he's given in a long time, and the pacing is, is really immaculate for the story it's trying to tell. So Paint opens up this Friday from IFC Films. It is going to be uh, coming to a theater near you beginning April 7th. So if you guys have seen, grew up watching Bob Ross, if you guys have seen the documentary, if you guys have seen Death to Smoochie, comment below. Let me know what you guys think about those. And check out Paint this, this upcoming Friday. But let's talk about mental health. If you guys are new to our content, Mental Health Moment is where we take a theme out of mental health, the film which we're talking about, talk about it for a few moments in the hopes to deconstruct the stigma surrounding mental health. One of the storylines woven in throughout the course of this film is the relationship between Watkins' character and Wilson's character and their past romantic uh, interceptions, if you will. Heartache is never really something that is easy to get over. I feel like no matter which way you do it, whether it, there's cheating involved, whether you broke up with a person, or you're the one that had their heart broken up with, I think for the majority of those times, regardless of your position in the situation, it's always a hard journey afterwards. And in a way, I really love the way that, that the film conveys that because it gives it this sense of intimacy that I feel like uh, some other films are kind of afraid to touch. But you do have this, and it doesn't matter how much time goes by if you genuinely love that person, and that heartbreak is real. Those mental health effects are going to be felt long after... Uh, that relationship is ended and you've moved into a new one. And that's why it's so important to properly grieve relationships, especially after they've ended. A couple of years ago, we had a chance to do a series of episodes on the podcast front called Marriage and Mental Health and Divorce and Mental Health. And I think those are really viable resources and conversations, especially in regards to this movie Paint and kind of the relationships of Watkins and Wilson's character. As I've said on, on this platform many times, I had gotten around a lot before, uh, before dating and eventually marrying my wife. Heartbreak was something that I knew really well and it still really had an effect on me even at a young age. And there are so many people that have, have felt the, the wrath of oh, the heartache, uh, the heartache and the heartbreak. So. You're not alone if you're currently watching this and you or someone you know is going through this. So check out those episodes and please, if you, it comes down to it, find out, find some way to, in Carl's case, he went and, and started painting and that was his, uh, 
that was his coping mechanism to get over that was his therapy for me i jumped into poetry and music and now i make content like what you're watching right now seek out and, and find out a, a creative outlet where you can unleash that the heartbreak and work through uh properly grieving that relationship and down below again i'll provide the links to those uh those episodes as well and i strongly also recommend uh checking out our mental health resource library as well paint is coming to theaters april 7th from ifc films and uh yeah if you guys are going to see it let me know again let me know down below make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button links to all of our podcasts social media patreon and more in the show notes as well and down there you'll hit this you'll see the subscribe button have a good night